Hey everyone, this is Josh, and today we're doing a tutorial that goes beyond simply just Bitcoin and blockchain during this critical time of activism and protest against state violence. Today we're going to be talking about some basic steps that you can take to secure your digital life against attackers of many forms, from thieves to trolls to even the police. So let's talk about these basic steps that you can take to keep your digital life safe. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is passwords. It's very important to use safe and secure passwords, or rather, pass phrases. In reality, instead of just using a short password, something like birthday 0108 or some other information that's really easy to find out about you, you should really be using a longer pass phrase that's a sentence made up of words uh, that aren't like something that's super predictable. So for example, this is a long encryption pass phrase is much better than birthday 0108. And the reason for this is that passwords aren't actually generally stored as just the raw password in a database. Passwords are actually stored as password hashes. Hashes, in short, are one-way functions that you could even think about uh, as a type of encryption, although that's not really what they are technically. And when somebody breaches a database full of password hashes, they have to do a bunch of brute force guesses to try and figure out what the original passphrase was, because hashes are one way. And the more characters that a passphrase has, the much more difficult it becomes to brute force attack. The next very important thing to do is you should really store your credentials in an encrypted password manager. Uh, this is a piece of software like KeePass, for example, which is open source. So if you store your credentials in here, it'll store them in an encrypted uh, file or an encrypted database. And you only have to remember one long and very secure master passphrase. You won't have to remember a bunch of different ones for all of your individual accounts. You can even use a password manager like KeePass, KeePass to generate uh, random passphrases that can be very, very secure uh, versus one that you come up with yourself. If you want something even simpler and you're tech savvy and you, you understand uh, the particular software that you're using to do this, you can even simply store your passphrases in an encrypted file. For example, LibreOffice, which is an open source alternative to Microsoft Office, supports using the uh, very secure and well-vetted AES-256 encryption algorithm on its files. So if you create a file in LibreOffice and you choose to password protect that file, it's actually using secure encryption uh, that's based on your master passphrase. Now it's very important, I wanna note, um, I can't recommend Microsoft Office for this purpose, uh, because I at least know that older versions of Microsoft Office do not use secure encryption for their password protection. They use an in-house algorithm that's really fairly trivial to crack. I don't know if that's still the case with uh, more modern versions that may use encryption, but because I don't know, I'm only going to recommend that you use LibreOffice or you use something like OpenSSL to uh, create your encrypted passphrase file if you're at that uh, level of technical knowledge. Now the next thing that we need to talk about is two-factor authentication. And in particular, I want to recommend the use of app-based two-factor auth. 2FA is the idea that you have to have something that you know, which is your passphrase, and something that you have, which is your two-factor authentication code, to get into an account. I recommend that you use app-based two-factor authentication because this is a much more secure method. Uh, you may see that some websites allow you to use SMS text message based two-factor authentication where a code is sent to your phone by text message. And that is actually fairly insecure and commonly breached using a type of attack called a SIM swap attack. So really I recommend that you turn on app-based two-factor auth only on any account that you can. The third thing that we want to talk about is secure encryption. And this is encryption for both files and for communications. For any device that you're using, you really want to turn on full disk encryption. 
So this goes for your phones, your mobile devices, and your PCs like desktop PCs or laptops that you use. If you have a phone like an Android phone, you can set it up so that it has to be uh, decrypted with a pin on startup. So that way uh, you can turn off your phone if you're going through security checkpoints or something like that. And uh, somebody that tries to get into the phone has to have that encryption passphrase. It's great as well if you lose your phone, uh, you know, if you have a pin protected phone uh, and uh, someone can't get in with the pin when it's on, they definitely can't get into it when it runs out of battery and turns off because they have to have the encryption passphrase uh, to, to get into your information. For PCs, I recommend Veracrypt for Windows. It's a pretty well vetted tool uh, that will encrypt your full hard drive or you can use uh, the built-in encryption if you're running a popular Linux distribution like Ubuntu. This is really important for a number of reasons uh, because if you lose your device or somebody is intentionally trying to get into your device, uh, they can't get into it without having the encryption passphrase. And I wanna throw out the disclaimer that I am not a lawyer or a law expert, but it's my understanding that in most US jurisdictions, if you have a device that's turned off and encrypted, uh, you cannot be forced to give up that encryption passphrase so that the police can look at your data. So I highly recommend that you make sure your devices are encrypted, uh, which can protect you against both device thieves and against state actors. Um, when we talk about communication, it's really important to uh, communicate, especially in the context of activism, over uh, encrypted channels and not plain text channels like SMS-based text messaging or email. Again, email or normal text messages are sent in plain text. They're very easy for anyone to intercept and read the contents of. So instead, if you're talking about critical information, please use a secure, encrypted, and open source application such as Signal. These applications are designed to be very easy to use and they encrypt the traffic going between you and the receivers of the message uh, so that nobody can see that information. And that uh, device security is, is layered with um, making sure that your phone or your PC is password protected and encrypted. So if someone gets a hold of your phone, they can't go in and read the messages that somebody sent to you on an end-to-end -end encrypted application. And finally, I again want to recommend that when it comes to your credentials, so your passphrases for your uh, accounts, be sure to store those in an encrypted pass, uh, password or passphrase manager. So security is a complex and ever evolving topic. Um, everything that I've talked about here today is not a one size fits all solution. And it's very important for somebody to understand their threat model in a security context. And that means who are you trying to protect your information against? There are many attackers out there, uh, but I wanted to make this video today to, in, in particular to help activists um, understand digital security in the face of uh, the police state and uh, the violence that many are protesting against uh, in the United States. So I, I really want to wish everyone well. Um, I care for you all. I hope you stay safe. I hope that these tips can help you stay safe uh, it, with your digital communications and your digital life, which is such an integral part of how we live now. As always, I want to thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. I hope you learned something today and be well.